after doing like 20 videos, it's kind of hard to figure out how to start each one. Like, I just feel like I want to be creative, you know, and like make each video very interactive and fun. But it's really hard to do that when you're doing a 100 part series. <laughs> I also try to make my ads really not ad-like, but just for fun, I'm gonna really just, you know, go over the top. Hi there, are you tired of having struggles with your interview problems? Of course you, I see you struggling there with your code. Why don't you quit slopping around and learn how to code for real using Pramp? Whoa, what's Pramp? Funny you should ask. Pramp is an interviewing platform that really helps you get down your interviews. You think you might be able to code watching all these tutorials, but you really never know until you put that knowledge to the test and see if you can pass an interview. So go sign up for a free account on Pramp, get paired with another individual, and have your interview skills tested. Wow, that's so cool! What kind of topics are there? That is such a great question. Well, actually, they have stuff on data structures and algorithms, system design, front end, behavioral interviews, and they're continually expanding their options. So don't wait, visit the link in the description to change your interview skills now. <laughs> okay, back to coding. <laughs> so we've been working with the if statement and some of the basic data types, but you know, I really thought I'd switch things up and learn a little bit something new here. It's funny because it's a joke. Get it? Because we're gonna be talking about the switch statement. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask the user for their name, and then we're going to make different cases depending on what their name is on what's gonna happen. So the functionality is similar in nature to the if statement and that we're able to branch our application based on different values of this variable or this input. There are some differences between an if statement and a switch and we're gonna talk about that in this video. First thing we need to get user input. We are going to store their input in a variable called name and call scanner.nextLine. Now the structure of the switch statement, you first put the keyword switch and then in parentheses, you put the variable we're testing against. So we want to see what the person's name is. And then you put these curly braces, just like an if statement in structure, but functionality is a little bit different. So one difference here is you just put the variable name. You don't put equals equals or greater than or less than, just the variable name. And then inside of here, you're going to have different cases. Ugh, I feel like this needs to be indented, but for some reason, Eclipse does not indent them. <laughs> it drives me crazy. Maybe it's because I have my curly brace down here. Let me try it. So I'm just gonna go in here, type in case. Oh, nope, it still does it. Dang it, that's so dumb. Anyways, after the case, you put the value you are looking for. So I could say Caleb here. And then you put a colon, not a semicolon. So just the two dots. And then on the next line, you're going to put break. Now in between these two is where your code goes. Okay, so it's a little bit of a different syntax. You might not be used to it, and you have this weird break keyword. We're gonna talk through all of that, but basically, you're just saying, yo, man, if the name is Caleb, then do this code, and then break out of the switch statement. That's what the break keyword does. So we can also have additional cases in here. So for example, I could say case equals Claire, and then here we could have more code, and then we're going to say break. The break after each statement is important, and we'll see why soon. All right, so if the person's name's Caleb, we're gonna give him access to the app, right? Because anyone named Caleb is obviously a good guy, right? <laughs> Claire, on the other hand, well, you can go away. We all know Claire is the source of all evil, so we're just gonna say go away. <laughs> if by chance your name is Claire, please don't take it to heart. <laughs> all right, let's run this. What's your name? Well, of course, my name's Claire. It tells me to go away. What's your name? Caleb, welcome, my man. So you could probably figure out how to do something very similar to this with an if statement, and that would be totally fine. Generally, switches are good if there is a discrete number of values that we can choose from. Did I just use a big word? So if statements are really good if you have ranges. So if you wanna say, hey, your age is greater than 12, or you wanna say it's less than 50, for example. That same kind of thing does not happen with the switch statement. The only thing we're gonna do with a switch statement is get exact values. So that means the switch statement is not as broad in its usage, but it's also more specifically used for individual cases. So it might be a little bit clearer once you get used to the syntax, what's going on. If you're going to write this as an if statement, you'll probably have a lot more syntax, some more operators, a lot more stuff to deal with. It's not as clean, it's not as clear. Lastly, there's going to be a default case, which is optional. So we could say default, try again later, for example. And we're still going to put that break keyword here. All right, let's run this. What's your name? Billy, try again later. So the default acts as a catch all in that anybody who's not named Caleb or Claire is going to go to the default case. 
Now, what do these break keywords do? Well, it prevents something called fall through. Honestly, the way this works is kind of stupid, but if we leave out this break, what's gonna happen is if we put the name Caleb, it's going to execute this, and then it's going to continue executing all the other case statements until it hits a break. I don't think there's ever a good use for this, so you should always leave that break in there. So just to show you guys, if I put in Caleb, it says, welcome my man, and then go away. Definitely not what we're looking for. Why it does that, I'm not entirely sure. I think it has to do with some kind of structure in assembly language that they were mimicking in C, and then it just kind of caught on that, hey, you have to have this break statement in here to prevent this fall through. But it's not really a functionality that we would see ourselves using on a regular basis. In general, I would say it is a bad idea and you should always have this break keyword here. In other programming languages such as C-sharp, it requires this break keyword here or something similar such as go to. So I like that because it prevents the mistake of fall through, but Java is not the case and we have to remember to put this break statement here. In the last one, the default case, why in the world do we put this break here? Well, mainly it's just a convention thing. For one, if other languages require break, then we're already going to have the habit of putting this break in this default. Another reason is, hey, we might decide that the majority of cases are gonna hit this default, so we might just save ourselves some effort and put these up, up at the top. Well, if we forgot to put this break statement in, what's gonna happen is, you know, if we put something wrong in there, it's going to fall through. So just for safety, if we ever wanted to rearrange the order of our cases, I always put that default with a break. So I'm gonna take that and put that back at the bottom. Now there's one other thing I wanted to show you guys, and that is having one thing execute for multiple different cases. So let's say we wanted to get rid of everybody named Caleb and we wanted to get rid of everybody named Claire. What we would do is we would just get rid of all the content inside of the case for Caleb and just have them one after the other like this. So now this is going to execute for both of them. So when we run it, Caleb, it says go away. If we put in Claire, it says go away. That's pretty useful if you want to do the same thing for numerous cases, that's how you do that. This is the only scenario where I can think of where you're not going to be putting a break for the Caleb. You're just going to combine the cases together and this is going to execute for either one of them. That's all I have for the switch statement. I do give you the challenge, if you want to get some more development practice, try converting this switch to an if statement and post your solution in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed the content so far, please consider subscribing to the channel. This is tremendously helpful for me. Also check out the description for the link for the Java crash course, the notes, and a link to our sponsor. So thank you guys, I'll see you in the next video. And in case you're wondering what we're talking about, we're probably going to be talking about the ternary operator, or the conditional operator, if you've heard it as that. Or we might just go into that video and I'll decide something else to talk about. So we'll see. <laughs> Catch you guys later.